Being a cochlear implant is a small complex electronic device that can help to provide the sense of sound to a person who is either profoundly deaf or uh, finds it very difficult to hear. And just as we had promised you last week, today in our Healthy You segment, we will show you how the device works. Katie and Malaki Villa had the opportunity to witness the surgery being done at the Nairobi Hospital and she was kind enough to file the following report. Last week, we brought you the story of Wambua who lost his hearing due to meningitis. But today, Wambua's hearing is back to normal thanks to the cochlear implant surgery he went through early this year. The cochlear implant surgery is a technology that benefits both the young and the old. Today, we'll focus on the surgical process so we can get to understand how the implant works. Cochlear implantation is a, is a method where we, uh, we bypass the cells that perceive sound to stimulate the nerve directly. In those people whose hearing is so badly affected that hearing aids don't help them, cochlear implant can be a solution. We do it in a minimal invasive way, only with a very small incision behind the ear, and then we introduce the implant. We are here at the Nairobi Hospital Theatres, and just as you can see, the doctors, the team is ready to operate on the one-year-old baby girl, and the surgery is famously known as the cochlear implant surgery. Prior to the surgery, the implant candidate is anesthetized with a general anesthesia, then some hair is shaved off where the surgery will be done. But not to worry, for this is usually a small amount of hair just behind the ear. The area of the surgery is then heavily cleansed, after which an incision is made, and then the skin is lifted so that the surgeon can drill into the skull bone behind the ear. It is a relatively minor operation, for it roughly takes two hours and the surgeons are now ready to insert the implant into the drilled out area. But before the device is implanted into one's ear, it is first tested using a special computer software to ensure that it is 100% reliable. And here, extra caution is needed when handling it. So now, now be careful. If you open it, this is now sterile. Yes, Thereafter, the receiver is placed into the drilled out area and an electrode array is inserted into the cochlea. It is at this point that more testing is done to ensure that the device is picking commands from the software, a key sign to giving the surgeons a green light that the procedure is over and successful. Finally, the surgical area is closed up with stitches and the head is bandaged. However, there is more after the surgery. About four weeks after the surgery, that's when we have what we call the switch-on. So during the switch-on, the external processor is usually put behind the patient's ear and then the magnet is connected, yeah? And then what happens after that is that the patient feels some stimulation and then they can perceive and we set a level for them. And then she can start what we call rehabilitation. We sought to inquire how costly the procedure may be. The total cost of the procedure, uh, the most expensive thing is the implant. The implant costs about um, 18,000 euros, the, uh, which is uh, translated to about 1.8 million shillings. And uh, the surgical procedure, the hospital and the rehabilitation for one whole year, because we don't want anybody to miss rehabilitation, would cost between 700 and 900,000. So that means that the total cost for the procedure is about 2.8 to 3 million. Medics say that different factors may contribute to hearing loss and it is up to me and you to exercise extra caution. There are various uh, causes of uh, hearing loss, even as we grow. Even a child could be born very normal. Then uh, say they get um, infected uh, in their infancy. Certain infections like meningitis uh, can destroy the cells of hearing in the cochlea. Also, certain drugs uh, uh, can cause hearing loss. Also, noise, if you're exposed to a very loud noise, it can also destroy your hearing. The other thing is, if, for example, the mother has had problems during pregnancy, the child is born uh, underweight, the child is born before term, the child develops yearliness of uh, eyes, the labor is prolonged, the child doesn't cry very well immediately after birth. These are children who are at risk of hearing loss and they should be assessed, yeah, preferably within the first six months of life. 
This technology currently being offered at the Nairobi Hospital clearly shows that it is never too late to have your hearing back. Mala Kivila, healthy you.